What's going on, Jerome? So Chad Reuter, NFL Draft Analyst over at NFL.com, is freshening up his four-round mock draft. And we went through, and the Vikings, four rounds, we're in. Uh, I hate the places that do the two-round mock drafts because the Vikings only have one pick in the top two rounds. But they have seven. Siete in the top four rounds. One first, two thirds, and four fourths. Let's get after it. At 14, overall, the Minnesota Vikings select dun, 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 dun. Elijah Vera Tucker, ABT guard from USC. Dun, 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 dun. Now, given the way that the Vikings for agency has panned out and ABT is a stud, yes, just go do it. If Christian Derrissaw, Rashawn Slater, not on board, Ah, go get your guy. 6'4", 314, 2019 at USC at left guard. Only allowed one sack and seven pressures. 78.8 PFF grade. First team, all pack 12. USC offensive lineman of the year. Played solid in a handful of games in 2020 at left tackle, but that's not his future. He's going to be a left guard. He's a nail driver. If you got Ezra Cleveland left tackle, Elijah Vera Tucker at left guard, you are set at left side. Let's go. Into the third round. Curveball, 78 overall. The Vikings select quarterback Kyle Trask from Florida. Woo! Now, I'm on board with the Vikings taking a quarterback, but this early and Kyle Trask, I don't know. 6'5", 240, Richard Sr. Blew up this year, respect. Uh, 4,283 yards passing, 43 touchdowns, 8 interceptions. Led the FBS in touchdowns. Second team, all SEC behind only Mac Jones. Fourth in the Heisman voting as well. Has NFL size. You love the leadership. You love intangibles. This is a kid who does not give up. He was actually Derek King's backup in high school in Texas, and he sat and waited his time and got his spot in Florida, eventually replacing Flippy Franks, who's going to be a late-round pick out of Arkansas, who transferred out uh, from the Gators after Trask beat him out. So, I don't know. I want to root for this kid, but accuracy is suspect at times. Mechanics are suspect at times. Plus, you wonder if spread offense skills translate to an NFL offense. I don't know. But can sit behind Kirk for a year or two, Clint Kubiak and Andrew Janaka, work in him, break him down, build him back up. He was the seventh quarterback off the board. Stanford's Davis Mills was number six. Uh, but I would have rather taken Kellamon. I would have rather taken Jamie Newman later. I would rather gone in a different direction in 78. There's a lot of value on board. Odigi Zua is on board as well as J2 Fele if you want to go defensive tackle. Rashad Weaver, the edge rusher from Pittsburgh is on board. Offensive line, Wyatt Davis, Kendrick Green. Let's double down. Let's go, man. Demetric Felton, the running back wide receiver, do-it-all guy. Kelvin Joseph, the cornerback from Kentucky. Diami Brown, the wide receiver from UNC. You get the picture. You get the picture. Uh, next up, third round, number 90 overall. The Vikings go wide receiver. Offense, offense, offense. Tylon Wallace uh, coming out of Oklahoma State. Now, I like this kid a lot. 5'11", a buck 85-pound senior. Uh, 59 catches, 922 yards, receiving six touchdowns last year. He broke out in 2018 as a sophomore, 86, 14, 91, and 12. Just a really tough kid. Can run the full route tree despite coming from a spread option air raid offense. My Gundy, I'm a man. I'm 40. Uh, he is feisty and insane in contested catch spots. And he really does remind me of Stephon Diggs, where you have the six foot wide receiver, slightly built, but quick and tough, and just gets after it, sticks his nose into the cornerback's face, and is going to go up and get a contested ball. You like it. But yeah, the Vikings in this spot. Why Davis is still there, man? Why Davis is still there? I mean, this is a deep wide receiver class. I like Tylon, but I don't know. It's the curse of having too many talented players where once you break. Uh, once you break and, and, and take a guy, you're like, ah, we're missing out on that guy. But no, Tylon Wallace is a really tough dude. I, I like him a lot. Into the fourth round. So this fourth round could be legendary for the Vikings. 119, Wheeler Walker Little Jr., the tackle from Stanford. Redshirt Sr., 6'7", 320. Absolute great athleticism as well as technique. 2018, only 12 pressures, 3 sacks allowed, 81.2 PFF pass block grade. And you're thinking, well, why is he so late? Well, he was injured after one game of 2019. He opted out of 2020. So... His last real tape was two years ago. But he, if he can still pan out on that promise, on that potential, I think that in the fourth round, he could be a steal. I think that he is a guy that eventually could work his way into becoming a starter. But it would be a good problem to have where maybe you kick him inside at guard, but if Ezra pans out a left tackle, those bookend spots between him and Brian O'Neill are going to be spoken for. So either way, it's great young depth and a guy that likes to get after it. Also in the fourth round, a 125. So 
A name that's been flying under the radar. So Kylan Granson, the tight end from SMU, 6'3", 235-pound senior, formerly was at Rice and then transferred in-state, uh, went up to uh, Dallas at SMU in 2019, and he busted out. First year there, uh, 43, 7, 21, and 9 touchdowns. This year, 35 catches, 536 yards, receiving 5 touchdowns. Uh, developed a really nice rapport with Texas transfer quarterback Saint Shane Bouchelle, who's going to be a day three selection. And he's another move tight end. Uh, he is not a hand of the dirt getting after it in line tight end. He is a slot and a joker. He really is in the mold of an Irv Smith Jr. and a Tyler Gronklin. And this could be a pick that is planning to move on from Tyler Gronklin after his rookie deal is up. Because how much are you going to pay him? Do you really want him back with Irv Smith in the building? Now, Preference-wise, I would rather take just a, a, a big-time, big-bodied, slobber-knocker, big-blocking tight end. But Granson it, it does have a lot of talent and just adds another dynamic element to this offense. Also in the fourth round, 134, Quincy Roche, the Miami defensive end, the other Miami edge rusher, not named Rousseau or Jalen Phillips, 6'3", 243. And he was a star at Temple. He was AAC Defensive Player of the Year in 2019, 13 sacks that season. Grad transfer to Miami, him and Jalen Phillips getting their grad transfer on 36 pressures and four and a half sacks this year undersized probably best suited as a 3-4 outside linebacker but could this be a, a, a scheme shift could Quincy Roach be getting after it as a stand-up outside linebacker guy could you put his hand in the dirt sure uh, but definitely would be a sub package dude to start his career maybe a little bit more down the line it's possible lastly in the fourth round so the Vikings start hammering safety 143 divine Diablo safety out of Virginia Tech 6'3 226 box and slot safety where you know, with Virginia Tech, the Cam Chancellor comparisons are certainly there. He's not quite the athlete Cam Chancellor was. It doesn't quite bring the wood either. But last season, 79.9 PFF grade, 53 quarterback rating when thrown at. He is a, a box strong safety, small outside linebacker mold, can cover in the slot as well. We'll play some special teams, work his way up in two to three years. Could he eventually crack the starting lineup or at least develop into a J. Ron Curse uh, type role in sub packages? Absolutely. So overall, if this is how it goes down, beyond the reach for Kyle Trask, I'm pretty okay with this. So ABT at 14, he's going to be your nail driver day one at left guard. Tylon Wallace is going to be a tough dude, wide receiver three. Uh, and eventually it's going to be Jefferson and Tylon. That's a really nice duo that you got there. Wheeler Walker Little Jr. has that phenomenal offensive line depth. They can never have enough tackles. Uh, and then Kylan Granson does add a dynamic athletic element, even though is he too much like Irv and too much like Gronk? Well, we said that last year about Jefferson being too much like Thielen. That worked out. Yeah. Quincy Roach, I like a lot. But it is a square peg and a round hole on the Vikings defense, but could add some presence as a sub-package guy. Just put him on the edge, put him as a stand-up guy, and just get after him. Maybe play some 3-3-5 nickel and go. And D Divine Diablo, very talented safety class, but if he's the guy uh, working his way, adding some strength in the box and some special teams prowess, working his way up on the safety board, go ahead. And you know, with Kyle Trask, uh, again, I like him. I, I'm not in love with him. I certainly don't like him at 78, especially with Kellen Mond and Jamie Newman on board. But certainly, Kyle Trask sitting down for two years behind Kirk Cousins, breaking down his mechanics, rebuilding them back up, learning an NFL offense, working with Clint Kubiak and Andrew Janako. He could be something. Uh, come year three, he could be that dude. He could be that heir apparent, certainly. I'm not going to bet against this kid. Look up his backstory. Just a, a kid that just does not give up. And you love that about him. He's got grit and determination. So we could be wrong. We're always wrong. It doesn't matter. But uh, your thoughts on our thoughts. Chad Writers, four-round mock draft over at NFL.com. Let us know in the comments section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once support that work, pull some of the Venmo. But until next time, Skull, production value.